FNAF has a lot of fan-made animatronics, the main reason why being the fact that there is hundreds upon hundreds of fan-made FNAF games, and in said fan games there is also hundreds of fan-made animatronics. So with there being a ton of fan-made FNAF animatronics, there is bound to be some absolutely terrifying ones found in said games, and that's exactly what we're going to be looking at in this video. So before we take a dive into some of the scariest fan-made FNAF animatronics, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now before we take a look at these animatronics, I would like to mention that I will be showing these animatronics from least scary to most, so the first ones we will be looking at won't be as scary as some of the later ones seen in this video. Anyways, with that being said, the first ones that we are going to be looking at are the brand new Baddington FNAF 1 animatronics from the fan game FNAF Baddington Edition. These animatronics are a one-to-one -one recreation of the main ones from FNAF 1, and as you can see, they all have a very unique style, very reminiscent of the animatronic scene in Chuck E. Cheese. Literally side by side, they look almost the exact same. Taking a deeper look at them, we can clearly clearly tell that they are made out of some softer substance such as cloth, unlike how many of the animatronics we see in FNAF are made out of a hard metal and plastic material, and due to the softer materials that these animatronics are made out of, they almost look like teddy bears in a way. The only animatronic that kinda strays away from the soft cuddly look is Foxy, and that's because his design still stays very true to the original, with him being all beaten up and withered. He is still made out of the same material, but is just more beaten up. Oh yeah, we can also see Golden Freddy throughout the game, and he looks very good, and he also has a more rubber face and looks to be made out of different materials compared to the others. He has a weight creeper look because he is sitting up more compared to how Golden Freddy does in FNAF 1, giving him the appearance that he almost looks alive in a sense. Plus he also, to what I think, uses the same model seen in Baddington's FNAF VHS videos, which is a cool nod to that too. Now I will have to say, my favorite things about these animatronics are how real they look, but if you think these ones look realistic, wait till we see the Unbearable 101's iterations of the FNAF animatronics. Now the Unbearable 101 has some of the most underrated fan-made FNAF animatronics I have ever seen, with him having almost a hundred different versions of them on his DeviantArt page. But we are only going to be taking a look at a couple of them, with those being the rotten versions of his fan-made versions of the FNAF 1 animatronics. He has made clean and old versions of them, which are also really good in high quality, but just aren't as scary as the rotten ones are. As you can see, these animatronics have taken very heavy inspiration from the withered animatronics from FNAF 2, along with also taking inspiration from animatronics seen in real-life establishments, like Chuck E. Cheese. All these animatronics are made out of the same furry material seen on the majority of real life animatronics and show off a very realistic rotting to the suits. These animatronics look like they have been sitting in a very damp back room and were forgotten about for years, which is shown through the dirtiness seen on their fur. Like I can just smell how these animatronics look, and I know that sounds weird, but I do think that they would probably smell like wet dog and mildew along with a hint of black mold. I don't know, it's just hard to explain, but I don't think I've ever seen someone so accurately portray rot this well on animatronics. I also can't forget to mention all the stylized changes made to these characters, with Freddy wearing a red and black vest along with his bow tie and top hat matching his accent colors. He also has very realistic paws and feet that match with his design very very well. Bonnie also takes some inspiration from Freddy, wearing pants that act as overalls while also having his bow match the colors of him. He also has hands and feet that are very similar to Freddy's as well, and he also looks very good as it matches his style as well. Chica is a bit different from the rest, with her sporting a full apron instead of just the bit which we can see is extremely dirtied and rotten. Even her cupcake is completely destroyed as well, which is a very nice detail to see that we usually don't see on a majority of fan-made animatronics. And Foxy, well he is definitely the scariest out of the bunch, with him having bright orange eyes that look like they are staring directly into my soul. He is also the most withered of the bunch, like usual, with him missing the fur around his legs while also missing the fur on his hands and feet. Now even though these animatronics are some of the most realistic ones I have ever seen, I will have to say that there are more unique iterations of these characters characters that are, in my opinion, more scary. And that brings me to show you guys Hush Puppy Art's terrifying versions of the FNAF animatronics. Now even though Hush Puppy Art doesn't have very realistic fan-made animatronics, I will say they have some very disturbing versions of some of the characters, with the ones most disturbing being their iterations of the FNAF 4 Nightmare animatronics. Now unfortunately, they do not have fan art of every animatronic from FNAF 4, but the ones that they do have, I think is more than enough because they are pure nightmare fuel. They have made Nightmare Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Nightmare Nightmare Fredbear, which I will save for last. Taking a look at these animatronics, we can immediately tell that there is a very specific type of art style shared between all images, and it is very unique and is unlike any other fan art I have ever seen for FNAF characters. Looking at Bonnie, we are immediately greeted with possibly one of the most terrifying smiles ever, with him having multiple rows of teeth and blood all around his mouth, and all over his body. He also seems to have hyper-realistic eyes, which is a trend for Hush Puppy's artworks. Bonnie is pretty tame compared to the rest we will be looking at, 
but the small details like his long claws, exposed endoskeleton, and so on are very nice details to see that are just very underappreciated with these animatronics. Anyways, looking at Chica now, I think we can immediately tell that this one is 10 times more disturbing than Bonnie, with her having a gigantic beak that, as we can see, is filled with a gummy-like tissue like how humans have in their mouth. We can also see saliva connected from the bottom to the top of her beak, which makes her look almost like a real-life organism and not an animatronic. She is also covered in blood and has very sharp endoskeleton claws and even has a very disturbing version of the cupcake. Yeah, not much else to say about that. Anyways, moving over to Foxy, we are immediately greeted with his huge jaw and sharp rows of teeth and very snake-like tongue. He is pretty simple in design with his mouth taking the majority of the detail in this image. He is also covered in blood and has his iconic hook. And there's not really much else to say about him. But anyways, we're gonna now move on to Nightmare Fredbear. But before we do take a look at him, make sure to pulverize that subscribe button if you love FNAF. Anyways, Nightmare Fredbear is by far the most disturbing of the bunch, with him having dozens of rows of teeth both in his mouth and on his stomach, which are both very bloody. We can also see that he has fluff inside of him, which is actually coming out, just like if he was a teddy bear. There isn't much to say about him, as I don't think I need to explain why he is absolutely terrifying. But if you think those fan-made versions of the FNAF 4 animatronics are bloody and gory, wait till you see these animatronics from the new FNAF 4 fan game titled When the Lights Go Dim. When the Lights Go Dim is a brand new FNAF fan game that has been very popular as of recent, and for good reason. The game was made by Fredinator and was just released less than a month ago, and due to the gameplay and the animatronics, it has blown up. Now due to the game being brand new, there isn't really any in-depth looks at the characters, which kinda sucks because these have some of the most detail I have ever seen on fan-made animatronics. Looking at Nightmare Freddy, he looks very similar to his normal FNAF 4 counterpart, but as as you will see with all these animatronics, they all have dead bodies in them, just like how Springtrap does. Freddy's mask also moves very similar to how the Funtime's mask open up, which is a very interesting detail. Nightmare Bonnie has way more detail than Freddy does, with him actually holding his mask in his hand, and he is also missing his left arm, so he looks very much like Withered Bonnie. We can also see that he has an exposed ribcage, and most importantly, we can take a detailed look at the corpse inside of him. Moving over to Chica, she too, just like Freddy, is very much so the same, but looking inside of her mouth, we can see the stretched out jaw of the body inside of her, which is very disturbing. She also seems to have different feet, but I am not 100% sure of that. Anyways, moving over to Foxy, we can see he also looks the same for the most part, until you look closely at his mouth, where we can see another stretched out jaw, but with a sharp tongue sticking out of it instead. Now this game does have more animatronics, but in my opinion, these ones look the best and the most scary. But moving away from FNAF 4 animatronics, we're going to be taking a step back to a fan made version of an animatronic seen in FNAF 3 that being Chromanite Springtrap. This version of Springtrap is personally one of my favorites just because of the sheer amount of detail, blood, gore, and uniqueness it has. Plus, it was also on the thumbnail for this video. Looking at the full body render, we can clearly see, well, a lot. Looking at his design, we can see that the Spring Bonnie suit was originally yellow, along with it having overalls on and a bow tie, and maybe even possibly having stars hanging off of its ears. Then looking more in depth, we can see the blood and organs from William Afton inside, even seeing his bones with in the suit. There is even a render of the corpse without the suit, and we can see even more in depth the guts and bones that are actually inside of the suit. Just looking at William Athens' decayed face is completely disturbing, with his teeth all broken and his eyes being impaled from the suit's eyes. But looking even more in depth, there is a close-up render of Springtrap's face which is even more disturbing, where we can see even more details that we weren't originally able to. We can even see that there's spider webs on the suit and that there's tons of wires coming out of the suit. Just looking at the design, it's personally one of my favorites of Springtrap ever. It is so bloody, it's so gory, and it's so disturbing. But surprisingly, there is still more bloody and gory animatronics than the last couple of ones we have seen, with arguably the most gory one on this list being the corpse. Now this animatronic is actually of Michael Afton after he got scooped, and when he had all the animatronic pieces inside of him. So yes, technically he is still considered a animatronic. Now there is a lot of renders of what Michael Afton looked like after he getting scooped, but I feel like this one is the scariest out of all of them. Taking a look at him, we can see he has an exposed stomach with a lot of his intestines sticking out, and he also has his very iconic purple skin. We also see wires sticking out of his chest along with a lot of bruising and blemishes all over his body. But then finally looking at his face, he has no eyes or even anything inside of his mouth. He is just empty. Like there's no better way to explain it, he literally is just a puppet, or like a skin suit or whatever you would want to call it, and this render really shows how much of a puppet he is and how much of a, I don't know, skin suit he looks like. Just the thought of having all of your insides scooped out and replaced with animatronic parts is absolutely disgusting, and seeing a realistic version
version of what that would look like is gut-wrenching and I I cannot get this out of my head. But if you think that those designs aren't scary, then we still have a couple more to look at, which you can check out by clicking either one of these videos on screen right now.